Today we close up our series, Battle for Our Hearts. What we've been doing over the last several weeks, we've been looking at those idols that, that are battling for the throne of our hearts, that are battling to kick God off the throne and rule us, control us. And what we've seen over the last several weeks is that uh, idols aren't the answer for several reasons. Idols, idols, <laughs> yes, exactly. Amen, right? Uh, idols promise a lot of things, but they never fulfill. They promise us satisfaction, and they satisfy for a brief moment, but then we're back to wanting more. They promise us fulfillment, and we're fulfilled for a little bit, but then we're empty again looking for more, and we, we have to strive, and we keep striving. They promise us a lot, but they never deliver. But the worst thing that the idols do is they lead us away from our Savior God. That's the worst thing that idols do. Because everything else is temporary. We're, we're striving, we're not satisfied, sure. But in the end, it leads us away from our God. And in the end, if we're away from our God, that means punishment. And so idols aren't the answer. And as we close up this series, we want to go forward and we want to uh, talk about what's the key to removing idols and replacing idols from our hearts. Because it's not just uh, uh, enough to remove idols from our hearts. Because a vacant throne isn't vacant for long. <laughs> Something or someone is going to take that spot. And we want it to be Jesus. And so what's the key? So what we're going to look at today is we look at Colossians chapter 3. Uh, Colossians was a letter originally written by the Apostle Paul uh, in 60 AD. He's writing to the, the Christians living in a city of, called Colossae. He's in prison, writing to them about how great and glorious our Savior is. The Colossians were brand new Christians. And so they knew Jesus. They knew Jesus lived. He died. He rose again for them. But they had the mindset of Jesus plus something. I still need something. I need to observe this holiday. I need to worship on this day. I can't eat that. I can't drink that. I can't do this, I can't do that. And Paul says at the end of chapter 2, all of these things don't serve you. In fact, here's what he says at the end of chapter 2 to launch into chapter 3. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. This is such great advice for you and me. It was great advice for the Colossians, but for you and me too, because we've come to know Jesus. We know that it's through his perfect life, his innocent death and resurrection, that we are forgiven, that we have the security of eternal life, that we are children of God, and yet there's a part of us that still wants to say, yeah, but I need to do this. I want to do this. X, Y, and Z has to be done. I have to stay away from X, Y, and Z, otherwise... And Paul says, no, no, no. If you're relying on those things for your security as a child of God, you're wrong. It's only Jesus. If you're looking to, to feel secure uh, for your identity, if you're looking for a status in what you're doing or what you're not doing, then Paul says, those do's and do nots lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. It's not going to help you fight sin. It's not going to help you live for Jesus. It looks good, but it's not going to do the trick. What is? That's what Paul says and talks about in, in Colossians chapter 3. So let's jump in. He says, Since then you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. What's the key? Set your hearts and your minds on things above. Notice he repeats the same phrase two times in a row, just, uh, or about the same phrase, but he changes what he wants you to set on uh, the things above. First, set your hearts on things above. 
Then set your minds on things above. Your heart is the organ that we, we're, we associate what with? Love, desires. It's your heart's desire. Paul says, set your hearts. The thing in your body, the organ that desires things, set your desires on the things above. Set your minds on things above. Your mind is what forms opinion. And so what does Paul say to let form your opinion? The things above. Set your hearts, your desires, set your minds, the things that form your the thing that forms your opinion, set it on the things that are above. Why? Because the things above have done two things for you. Here's your first point. The things above change my eternal status. The things above have changed your eternal status. Paul says that, you, that for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Your life isn't here anymore. We're living here, but we're really living for heaven, to be with God. And Jesus has tucked you away in himself. He's tucked you away so the devil can't get you. He's tucked you away so the devil can't accuse you of anything. He's tucked you away so death can't conquer you. He says, you are forgiven. Death's been conquered because he rose from the dead. You are safe with me. That's where your life is. Paul says, set your mind and your hearts up there. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to sit around and daydream about heaven all day and What's heaven going to be like? Are we going to have wings? Are we going to eat? Are we going to, what's it going to be like? That's not really what Paul means. Paul's talking about the things that come out of heaven. Set your hearts and minds on the things that come out of heaven. Forgiveness of sin. Your identity that comes from Jesus. Your purpose and meaning in life that comes from Jesus. Your security and your status that comes from Jesus. Set your hearts and minds on that. It's when our hearts and minds aren't set on the things above that idols take the throne of our hearts. And you know what's so scary? Is it happens so subtly, doesn't it? It happens so subtly that our hearts and minds are taken off of the things above and are put onto earthly things. How do you know when an idol has taken your heart? Let's work through some questions that we can ask ourselves to figure out where our hearts and minds are set on. Number one, what do you find yourself daydreaming about? It's not wrong to daydream, but what are you constantly daydreaming about in, in your spare time? Where do you go in your mind for comfort, for joy, for an adrenaline boost? What do you daydream about for pleasure? What do you daydream about for, for an escape? And it's constant. That's what you set your heart and your mind on. What are you spending too much money on? That's what you set your heart and mind on. Is it things, materials? Is it your kids? Is it status and symbol and, and, and keeping up with everyone else around you? There you'll find what you've set your heart and mind on. What is it that is causing you an emotional response? You're, you've been praying for it. You've been asking God for it. And God says no. And it's causing you to be angry and bitter toward God. There you found what you've set your heart on and your mind on. See, as Christians, we, we can do that, can't we? we? We know that God has the power to do everything, and so we ask God, we pray to God, God, please grant this, please give me this, please, 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 and God says, no, not right now. Or just no, and then we get angry because our hearts and minds aren't set on things above, but on the earthly things. 
Paul says, set your hearts and your minds on things above. Because your life is there. It's not here. It's when we take our hearts and our minds off of heaven that idols come and rule our hearts. And as we said in the children's devotion, that's when life gets fuzzy, blurry. It gets confusing. Because we forget who we are. We forget where we're going. We forget our purpose. As we strive after all the idols that are ruling us. And yet when our hearts and minds are up above, what do we remember? Our life is tucked away with Jesus. We remember that he's given us an identity that nothing in this world can give. We are children of God, blood-bought children of God. He gives us value and worth. How much are you worth? The blood of Jesus, God's son. He bought you with himself. He's given you identity as an heir of eternal life, an heir of the kingdom of God. That's what you're going to inherit because of Jesus. He's given you meaning and purpose. Yes, we can find little purpose here as I get up and I go to work, as I get up and provide for my family, as I have to do this this week. Those are our our little purpose. But our overarching purpose in life is to glorify and honor the God who loves us and has made us his children. And so I I go into parenting with a purpose of glorifying God. I go into my marriage and treat my spouse in a way that's going to honor and glorify God. I go to work to honor and glorify God in everything I do because I'm his child. I have purpose and meaning. I have security. An eternal security because God has changed my status uh, from a sinner to a saint in his eye. No longer will death hold me down because Jesus rose from the dead. Death's been conquered. I have the security of knowing that even if I die, I'm going to live with Jesus forever because my life is tucked away with him. No medicine, no doctor, no vaccine can do that and give that security for you. Only our Savior Jesus can. And finally, he gives you a status that no money, no possessions in this world can give. You are an heir of God. And that status can't be taken from you if you go bankrupt. Because you are rich in the Lord through Jesus. We want to keep our hearts and minds on the things above. The things that come out of heaven because it's only from heaven that our desires of our heart are filled. It's only out of heaven that we hear the truth of God. That we have eternal life, the forgiveness of sins, life eternal, and it completely changes our entire life here and forever. It's through Jesus. Our life is tucked away with Jesus, and it's through him that our eternal status has been changed. And so let's keep our hearts and minds on things above. Because when we do, the idols are removed and replaced with our Savior. But Paul talks about a second point here. When our hearts and minds are on things above, it helps with those uh, sensual indulgences that Paul talked about at the end of Colossians chapter 2, those sinful desires. Here's what Paul says. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways and the life you once lived, But now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and you have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge and image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. See, the second way that keeping our hearts and minds on things above, what it does is it changes our eternal status and it changes our earthly life. When we have our minds and our hearts on things above, on those things that come out of heaven, it makes us want to live for the Lord. It makes us want to put to death those sinful desires that we have. It makes us want to put to death 
the sexual morality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Why? Because the Savior's on the throne of our hearts. He is ruling us in his love and his forgiveness, and it leads us to love like him. If you're struggling with any of these sins that Paul talks about, do you know what's happened? Our hearts and minds have been taken off of what's from above. And it's put onto something else. Every sin really breaks the first commandment, doesn't it? You shall have no other gods. Every sin can go back to that very first commandment. Why? Because if nothing else, I've put my wants and my desires above God. I've made myself God. Every single sin that Paul just listed here is really against idolatry. I've put myself or someone else on the throne of my heart's heart, and I'm either uh, fulfilling my own desires, or I haven't been fulfilled, and that's why I'm angry and raging and full, filled with malice. But Paul says when our hearts and minds are on things above, that's when we want to put to death these things. Why? Because the wrath of God is coming because of these sins. That's what Paul says. The wrath of God is coming because of these sins. So here's my question for you. Do you think God is kidding? We read, put to death sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed. Get rid of anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language. Do not lie to each other. Why? Because the wrath of God is coming. Is God kidding? The answer is obviously no. And so then why do we still live like this? Because a part of us thinks it's no big deal, right? It's just a little lust. I'm not hurting anybody. Nobody even knows. Evil desires, they're inside. Nobody knows. Greed? Well, can't I be greedy and not hurt anybody? Who cares? Anger? Everybody seems to be angry these days. Slander? What's the big deal if it's me and a close friend behind closed doors? Filthy language? Come on. It's not that big of a deal, is it? Yes. God's wrath is coming because of these sins. These are huge, big deals, if you want to put it that way. Paul says we need to put to death the sinful nature and the only way how is to get the idol off of our heart. Is to get the idols removed from our hearts and replaced with our Savior Jesus. That is the only way. And so how do we do it? If we've been living like this, notice in verse 7 Paul says, you used to walk in these ways. So what do we do if we say, Paul, I am walking in these ways. Now what? Now we repent. We repent. Because the gospel's just been background noise in our life. We repent. We're sorry. And we put our hearts and minds on things above. And what do we hear? An amazing declaration. Verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and humility. God, I just admitted that I've been walking in these ways. An idol's been on my heart, and I've been, uh, I've been angry. I've been lustful. I've been greedy. I've let filthy language come from my mouth. I've lied. I've slandered. And what's the, the, uh, the announcement that comes from heaven? You're my chosen people. Holy and dearly loved. How in the world can God make that declaration about you and me? Only because of Jesus. Only because your life is tucked away with your Savior Jesus. Only because Jesus took all the sexual immorality, all the evil desires, the lust, the greed, the anger, the rage, the malice, 
He took your slander, your filthy language. He took all the lies that you've told. He took it all on himself. And he went to the cross where he shed his blood for you. There, he forgave your sins. And then he rose from the dead. And now he sits in heaven at the right hand of God, where he's tucked your life in himself, and he's clothed you with his righteousness, so that no one sees your sin, so that God can't see any of the impurities of your heart. He's washed you clean. And he says, you're tucked away with me forever. It's only because of Jesus that God now looks at you and says, you are holy. You are dearly loved. You're my chosen people. Set your hearts and your minds on things above and your eternal status has changed and your earthly life has changed because when we realize the gospel, God's love for us, that, that we've done all these things and yet he still says, you're my chosen people, holy and dearly loved, that's when we say, I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to do these things. Instead, I want to clothe myself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has any grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. See, when our hearts and minds are on things above, we realize our eternal status has changed. It fills every desire of our heart, and then it leads us to change change our earthly life, to, to put to death sin and cling to Jesus and put on love, to clothe ourselves with compa compassion, kindness, gentleness. It's only when our hearts and minds are on things above that we realize our eternal status has changed, our earthly lives change, and we live, glory, live lives that glorify God now and forever. And so as we close up today, we take one thing away from this entire series, let it be this. Set your hearts and minds on things above. The idols will be replaced, and we will glorify God in our lives now and forever. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the unbelievable love and forgiveness that you have for us, that you would send your one and only Son to live, die, and rise again for us so that we know that our sins are forgiven and that eternal life is ours. Uh, we thank you that out of heaven comes an identity that this world can't give. It, it, out of heaven brings meaning and purpose, security and status that nothing in this world could ever give. Uh, let that gospel not be background noise in our life, but let it be front and center in front of our eyes all the time. It's because of that gospel that uh, idols are removed from our hearts and lives are changed now and forever. Uh, as our status has changed, but also our earthly life as we live for you to glorify you in our thoughts, words, and actions. Guard our hearts, guard our minds, uh, that they aren't put on the things below, but instead help us to put them on things above where we realize that we are loved eternally. Help us put on love today that we may live to glorify you. In your name we pray. Amen.